Welcome, everyone. This is News Now from the Belmont Journal and our weekly segment with Franklin Tucker, editor of the Belmontonian, which you can find online at belmontonian.com. And I'm your host, Mike Crowley. So, Franklin, this week was the start of segment B of town meeting. What can you tell us? Well, you know, for the last 10 years, when, uh, when we first got a segment B, it could have been easily called segment boring because <laughs> it was it was usually the budget. The budget had been vetted out and it would oops, it would it would just be passed, you know, almost uh, just by uh, accumulation, accumulation, you know, by by the town meeting members. And, and that's not happening this year. <laughs> we already I, know. I do meeting. know a couple of town meeting members who fell asleep during the meeting. Oh, this meeting? Yeah. Yes. Well, well, that was the second thing. You know, Betsy Bose, um, she was talking at the uh, financial task force meeting and she, she had not been at town at town meeting. She said, how did it go? How far did you how far did it go? And when she was told that it only went through two articles after four hours, she said, we're in extra innings. This is going to take forever. You know, and it's true. This is going to be one of the most arduous <laughs> town no. meetings ever. So, Franklin, tell us about the two articles that was that were discussed on uh, Wednesday night. Well, let's start with the with the uh, the, the the most detailed um, uh, non binding <laughs> article ever. It uh, it was for um, an, uh, to take fossil fuel take fossil fuels out of new construction. Basically, there'd be an electric any new construction would have to be electric. Now this is non-binding, so it's uh, it's more of like a uh, uh, a way of the community telling the legislature we will support we would support this if we could have it. Unfortunately, um, when Brookline tried to do this, um, uh, the uh, the attorney general of the state said can't do it. You know uh, you don't have the ability to tell people that what that they can't have gas because that's so so Brookline's was a, a binding um that's right they, were, they, had done, they went through their bylaws and, and we we're, we're, we're had passed that but uh and, and, and this, this was different generate, franklin but it still generated controversy that's right it just people were asking uh well you knew that there were support there were a large number of support and you can see that by the, that it's, it's passage um uh, people were concerned about climate change, which is, you know, an important thing. And uh, but there were people who were wondering, number one, you know, uh, there is a, there there have been non-binding resolutions that suddenly become binding. You know, what happened? <laughs> um, so they were worried about that. But other people were just saying, really, does, does Belmont really want to be involved with like um, these policy questions about global initiatives? You know, Belmont is Belmont. It's a four by four community you know it's it's uh, it's really not um uh going to um affect uh much uh, uh there are uh, people who are supporting this are saying well every little bit counts so you know if we can get one state we can get one community we can get a state we can get a country if everything moves in that direction which is a, which is a great thought but even now in Belmont, you know, there are people who are saying it was funny because people are saying, well, it's not binding. And then they would also. But the supporters would then say, you know, so in five years when we do this, it's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, OK, it's non binding for, I guess. So, so, so you know, the people were worried that, you know, this was going to be another bind. It would become binding uh, to the to the residents. The second article was the Braves Act. It was called, called the Braves Act. It's basically a way of, of, of compensating. Uh, the, the large part of the, uh, of the article uh, is that uh, you would compensate uh, town employees who would be going off to military service, whether in the reserves or active duty. Um, it would make up the difference between military pay and town pay. Um, they, it's, and it would cost about $4,500 to $18,000 per individual. And Belmont basically has four people out right now. And that's, you know, the usual amount of people who are out. So it's, it, it, it wouldn't affect um, Belmont uh, a great deal. And uh, you, you did see people support uh, that amendment. They did. There was a little bit more pushback against um, a provision that would give um, a tax relief for uh, gold star families. That means if a person 
um, uh, if a resident dies um, uh, overseas in, 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 in combat and battle, um, uh, they uh, would receive um, their parents or uh, their immediate uh, relatives would, would, would um, <clears throat> receive a tax break, uh, a real estate tax break. So, uh, there was, so the, the value of it can be com, com, complete uh, uh, property tax relief, I, I believe. Isn't that that's right, what, Yeah, it, that's exactly right. And um, I don't think, you know, I, I think some people were saying, well, what if people take advantage of this? You know, they come to Belmont and want to be, uh, you know, uh, not pay real estate. You know, I'm, I, I think that's a bit of a, of, of a tone deaf kind of uh, approach towards this. Um, and, and as always, there's a, there's a provision in the bill that says after, I believe it's after five years, could be after three years, um, uh, that, uh, we can review this, this provision to make sure that, you know, if we want to change it, we can do it at that time. But the provision did pass, um, although, um, with, with, um, you know, more opposition than the other provisions of the Brave Act. Well, exactly. It's uh, we're we well. We, just, we should point out that the, the the Braves Act had four parts to it, and the last right. part, which was the gold uh, gold fam- gold star family, was the one that, that didn't receive that had more pushback than we thought. Um, I think it's just part of uh, what where Bel- Belmont's uh, uh, is at in terms of um, uh, trying to save money. You know, it, it's now um, something that uh, a lot of people are looking for at any kind of any kind of uh, article or uh, policy, you know, how much is this going to cost? And, um, you know, it's part of just being in, in, in uh, um, a, an age of austerity. Um, another topic, Franklin, you've got some news for us about the financial task force. That's right. The, uh, the uh, financial task force um, uh, that is reviewing um, uh, the budget and uh, finances in the town um, has, has one of their um, uh, uh, one of their agenda is to uh, make recommendations to the select board and, and uh, the warrant committee and the and the school committee on what we what should Belmont do in the future to uh, somewhat uh, be more transparent and also to relieve some of the the um, uh, you know um, cash uh, flow issues the the town has. Um, yeah, there's, and uh, they gave a sneak peek of uh, what they're going to recommend. Some of these are are are, are uh, things that you know every town should do, uh, like a five-year financial uh, model, uh, hiring a financial director position for the entire town. You know, develop an annual report for, on on the state of finances, um, and then also. Um, uh, the schools in the town should get together for union bargaining so they can bargain as, a, as almost like one unit. And since we do town budget as one, maybe, you know, union contracts can be done the same way. Um, the one thing that I think people will see as um, a real game changer, I think, is that they are, they are saying that um, there should be consideration of small periodic overrides that the town puts in its financial uh, model. That means uh, after you address all the structural deficits, uh, you look for all your um, revenue, uh, you recognize, and you recognize that key cost drivers such as pensions, healthcare, um, are going above 2.53% a year. Uh, it's really uh, the, the, financial, the financial task force is recommending periodic and predictable overrides um, uh, in the long-term uh, financial plan. That means look, it's just saying up front in our five-year financial plan at year three, we will ask for an override for a certain amount of money. That, so that would be a big change. That would be a big, uh, a big leap for Belmont. That would be that's exactly, but there are towns that do that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so it's not unusual. Uh, it's predictable. It's not large. It's something that people can, I think, they're thinking that we've done everything that we can. We can't go any further. If you don't want to, you don't want to pass this override, which will be, you know, it, uh, the last override was, you know, um, <clears throat> looking at about, you know, between six and $8 million. Um, this one, these would be quite tight. You know, these are just enough to, to, to get the, uh, to get the town over a, a five-year period of time, along with uh, uh, um, developments in uh, free cash, uh, how you handled free cash and using more free cash over to um, 
to offset the the, the structural deficit, um, this might be able that you might be able to sell that to uh, many people in town. All right, all right. So Franklin, um, let's talk about Jim Davis, Belmont Public Schools longtime athletic director, who is retiring. And for the sake of disclosure, I'm on the school committee, and I'm not expressing any opinions. <laughs> Uh, Jim Davis has been around for 19 years. Uh, I think he wanted to stay a little longer, but he had an illness. He looks great now. Uh, he looks he just, he looks the, the, the epitome of health. Um, so, um, there was a, a short 10 minute, um, 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 uh, ceremony, uh, at the halftime of the, uh, uh big uh, rugby match. Um, they gave him a, a Red Sox shirt with his name on the back and the number 19 for the number of years he's been in Belmont. Um, and he said that, you know, he's looking forward to um, doing things uh, that he always wanted to do, such as learn how to fly. So it was a great it was a great uh, uh, moment. We had students come out. We had uh, uh, the coaches um, uh, that he hired um, also um, uh, give their congratulations to him. Uh, but, but one thing I should say is that we really don't know where that position is going to be going. We don't know if That's there's right. going to be a, if we don't know if it's going to be a full time position or more likely a part time position. Uh, Jim Davis was somebody who really um, uh, promoted sports. He promoted physical education. He was a, a great proponent of um, just getting kids out there. I mean, he really uh, enjoy, he really enjoyed coming out to the games themselves. He wasn't somebody who sat back behind a a desk. He really promoted promoted it, and uh, uh, we'll see how um, athletics um, uh, fares in maybe in the next couple of years when there isn't somebody who's there constantly promoting it. All right, Franklin. Let's wrap with the, with Belmont's Memorial Day observance. What can you tell us? Uh, it was a, it was uh, the first um, uh, um, event in Belmont where we had normalcy, where we didn't have to wear masks. You know, other parts of the country have been going out to the beach, going to the bars, um, going to the Indianapolis 500. <laughs> so, um, but uh, in Belmont, we had uh, much more of a uh, solemn affair. Uh, it was um, well attended uh, despite the um, overcast skies. Um, and uh, we saw uh, the uh, chair of the select board, Adam Dash, make an appeal uh, saying that you know we're 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 honoring these um these people who gave their life to the country maybe we in belmont should start start thinking about like thinking of that sacrifice as a unifying um uh, event something that uh, we can uh, not um that we can work together to solve problems such as uh uh the budget in belmont such as uh an override um and and just uh he made it um clear that there's some um, frayed feelings, uh, something that um, uh, I think all the selectmen have uh, said they've seen. And they would, and uh, Adam Dash made a very um, uh, cogent speech about uh, bringing things together, bringing, bringing the community together, um, uh, and, and starting on that day, Memorial Day. Well, that's an important message. So Frank, uh, thank you, Franklin. And um, uh, you've been watching the Belmont Journal News Now. I'm Mike Crowley, and we will see you next time.